Greetings everybody, I'm very proud to present to you what I have been working for the past months. I've uh, finally made the stylized hair pro into a proper add-on. My goal was to get rid of the complicated workflow and in its place to have something that is a lot easier to work with. This video is an overview of the features you can expect from it and also kind of an explainer on how to use it. So here it is. After you download, you're gonna have this zip file. Now a quick disclaimer, this will only work with versions of Blender of 4 and above. It will not work with versions less than that. So keep that in mind. So in Blender, go to Edit, Preferences. In this window, navigate to the Add-ons section and click on Install. Then select the zip file, do not unzip it, just select it and click on install add-on. Then the add-on should pop up, if it doesn't, search for stylized and you should see it. Then click on this checkbox to enable it and we are good to go. Now we are going to need a model, you are going to use your character. I'm gonna use uh, Suzanne for this demo. I will just give her a subdivision surface, Control A to apply the modifier, and then right click to shade smooth. Okay. Now you can use this as the base mesh, but it's better if we have a separate mesh on the head for our hair. So in edit mode, I'll just select a bunch of faces that are going to be the base mesh. It doesn't have to be perfect, just some region uh, on the head. Ok, now with this selection, I'm going to shift D to duplicate it, right click to cancel any move. I will use Alt S to hide this inside of the head a little bit. Then P to separate this selection as its own object. I will rename this to Hair Base Mesh. And finally, let's parent this to the head so that it moves with the rest of the model. Now we can press N to view the side panel and there you should find the Stylized Hair Pro tab. Now select the base mesh and we can quickly add a hair curve to it by clicking this uh, add hair curve to mesh button. Now just click somewhere on the mesh and we have our first hair curve. It has entered us into sculpt mode and here we can use the snake hook tool to drag out this curve, like so. Ok, now we can go into object mode. Then, with this curve selected, we can add our stylized hair setup. And there it is, we now have a hair strand. You can see this has added the stylized hair geometry nodes modifier. This is where previously we had all the settings, but now there's nothing, because everything is in these panels over here. You can see shape twist, curves and all the others. We will look at them in more detail later on. A couple of things here. The name of this modifier, Stylized Hair Pro, do not change it because uh, it is considered when displaying all the settings of the add-on. Just leave it at that. And second, it is a good idea to put all of our hair strands in a collection. So here in the outliner, I will create a new collection, Hair Strands. Then I will move the hair strand, which is parented to the base mesh, into this collection. Now we can go into Sculpt mode on the curve, and you can use the sculpting tools to groom the hair strand.
to add a new hair strand, you can select back the base mesh and add a new hair strand from the bottom. But a better way, you can select a hair strand and click on the duplicate strand button. Now immediately, you can just click and move it somewhere else on the base mesh. If you want, you can reset it. If it has some modification, you can click reset and it will bring it to the base state. Ok, now we have a few main settings. This one will mirror the hair on the x-axis. This is the thickness of the strand. And this will rotate it. The rest of these are for final control. For example, the shape. This is the thickness for the root side and the tip side. Now you see these two settings all throughout the add-on, shape factor and contrast. You can see them down here as well. They control the influence, in this case, of these two settings along the length of the hair curve. Here, to see this better, let's increase the contrast. And now you can see we have thickness for the root side and the tip side. The shape factor will basically move the boundary between the two along the hair strand. And the contrast is how smooth this uh, transition is. That's what these two settings do. If you don't want the end to come to a close, you can open the tip. Also the root. Tip bulge will kind of inflate the tip. And this will round it off, so that it's not so pointy. And finally, you can flatten the hair strand from the root side and from the tip side. And you have the same control for shape factor and contrast. In this panel, we have all the controls for twisting the hair. You can twist the root, the midsection, and the tip. You can create three more custom twists. With this, you can determine how much you want to rotate, how tight the influence should be, and the position of the rotation along the curve. and you have three separate of those. And finally, you can add waviness to the hair strand if that's something you want. Alright, this section creates bumps on the hair strand. These are regular bumps. With these, you can create some stylish ponytails. These are irregular or random bumps. And these create bumps on the surface. This section is for curling the hair strand. Use these if you want to create curly hair. These options here will turn your hair curve into a braid. If you've ever tried to make a braid, you know how much of a pain it is to make and control. This section takes care of that. You can adjust the width. 
in the depth of the braid. The thickness of individual strands. You can pinch in the strands where they interweave. Randomize the strength thickness. And finally, you can twist and rotate each of the three strands uh, individually. Now we come to the section where you can select what type of profile the curve would have. You can see here these substrands, as I call them, running the length of the curve. With this option, you can decide how strong you want them to be, the scale of them, and a variation seed. If I turn them off, you can see we have a boxy profile. This smooth option will determine how sharp or smooth the strand is. Here some of you will notice I've optimized the shading so that it creates really nice sharp looking geometry without having any shading artifacts. If you make it smooth, you can use the preserve corners to preserve the sharpness of half of the corners of the profile. You can change this into a triangular profile. And this will have all the same settings. There's also what I call a robotic profile. This one is a sharp angular profile, if that's a look that you want to create. And finally we have the islands profile. This one will create many little independent curves that create the effect of many hair strands on this single curve. You can play around with the substrand settings to create different variations. And finally, if you want to create your own custom profile curve, you can select it from here and it will override all of these. Alright, moving to the ornaments. These you can use if and when you want to create a hair tie or some ornament that is on the hair. Check on enable ornaments and you see this hair tie appeared. You can move it along the curve. Select how wide it should be. You can control how much the hair should be pinched and the tightness of this pinch. So I've included several types of ornaments. This here is the hair band. You can see how it follows the curvature of the hair. And it will follow even if you groom the hair strand. Below it are some options that you can use to set the hair band. There's also a ring that you can turn into a coil. You can adjust the size, the rotation, coil radius and the thickness. There's also this scrunched up looking tie. And finally, and this is probably the most relevant to you, you can set your own custom object. Select it from this field. And you can adjust its size 
and rotation. If you have a collection of items, you can use the collection option. This will instance the entire collection, or if you want to pick up an individual object from the collection at random, you can use this checkbox. Finally, if you have regular bumps on your hair, you can check on this Ornaments in Bump Gaps option and it will instance an object on each pinch here, depending on how many bumps you have. And this will also work with the rest of the ornament types. Alright, here are dynamics. I've created a custom physics simulation so that if you have an animated character, you can use this option to have the hair react to the movement. So select a hair strand that you want to animate and enable the dynamics for it. Now if I play the animation, any movement of the base mesh will result in reaction from the hair. There are a few settings for the hair here, the stiffness of the strand, and damping of the movement. You can add gravity to the simulation. And this right here will control how much of the effect is applied along the length of the curve. Now you see, when we've enabled the gravity, the hair goes straight through the head. If you want to have collisions, you can check this enable collisions. Now select the head as a collider object. And here you can see the frame rate drops right down because this is quite a dense mesh. Collision calculations are heavily dependent on the density of the collider mesh, so try to use as low density meshes as you can. Higher quality steps will give you more accurate collisions, but it's going to be more resource intensive. And this is the distance from the collider mesh. In the materials and UV section, you can set the material for the hair strand and for the ornaments if you have any. The hair strands have a generated UV map so you don't have to do any UV unwrapping. I have this test material to show you the UV map. You can switch the order of the U and the V coordinate. You can scale the map along the length of the curve. If you have multiple curves on one object, you can pack all of their maps into one texture tile. And this is the offset distance between the UV islands. To show you what I mean, if we right click and convert this to a mesh, we can go to the UV editing workspace and see that we have a UV map created. But because there are two curves, 
there are two UV islands on top of each other, overlapping. But if I undo here and check on pack UV islands, convert to mesh again, now those islands are aligned next to each other. And there is a small margin between them. Okay, that's how you can use this. Now, to help you with the hair materials, I've created a few shading attributes that you can control from this shade settings menu. First off, let's get into our material. Here, when you've added the stylized hair setup, there's also a node group imported called Stylized Hair Pro Hair Attributes. Here you have a bunch of shades that you can use in your material. And you can control them from this panel. We have a strand gradient. If you have bumps, you can use this to darken the pinched regions. There's also one for the braid weave. This one will create a shape based on the substrands of the profile. From the panel here, under substrands shape, you can blur them, adjust the contrast, the color balance, and if you use the islands profile for example, there's a seed option. If you have any ornaments, this can be used to mask between the hair and the ornament object. Let's say we don't want the ends here to be so defined. What we can do, we can use the ends shade here and plug it into the alpha of the BSDF. Now in the shading panel, we can bring up the tip shade and you can see it starts to fade in the tip. We can control the contrast of this fade and also add some noise. And just like this, you can create a softer ending for your hair strand. You can do this to the root as well. If you want to use EV, to be able to use this effect, go to the material properties, under settings, and change the blend mode to alpha hashed. There it is. And here you can combine any of these shades to create your material. Play around with these and see what you can come up with. Finally, we have the hair settings. Here you can set the resolution of the geometry. Let's check on show wireframe to see what we are working with. You can make it very low poly or very dense.
This here is the shading style. Flat, smooth, auto smooth, whichever you want. With this you can subdivide the geometry or subdivide just the initial hair curve if you find that you don't have enough detail. Very often when you groom the hair curve it's very uneven and jagged so you find that you're constantly using the smooth brush to smooth it up. With this option here, you can apply a slight pre-smooth so that when you're grooming, it maintains a smooth curve. That way you don't have to smooth it manually all the time. It's a small thing, but it makes the editing process so much nicer. Finally, if the face orientation is wrong for some reason, you can use this to flip the normals. And that's it for these sections. There's one final one for global values. Here you can set some of the settings that will apply to all the hair strands that have the stylized hair modifier. For example, we can set a material for all of them. Then click on set and it will apply to all hair curves. And you can use this with various other settings from this panel. This scale factor will scale all the settings of the modifier. If you are working on a very small scale, instead of you having to input very small values for the thickness for example, you can scale everything down from the scale factor. Alright, and then you can use normal settings. So this is basically everything, but there's one final thing that is probably the best feature. I think you would agree that if you have a lot of these open, it could be very difficult to navigate to the settings you want. It's a lot of scrolling up and down. So I've created this quick menu. If you click it, a pie menu will appear. It has all the sections and a bunch of other stuff. But clicking here is a bit weird, so what you want to do Right click on this button and you can assign any shortcut you want. For me, I don't really use the D button for anything, it seems. See, I'm pressing it and nothing happens. So I'll assign it to my quick menu. Right click, assign shortcut and I'll press D. Ok, and now I can call this menu from anywhere with this shortcut. Now I don't have to search for anything here. Oh, I want to adjust the shape. And this is the same menu, just in this pop-up window. Oh, I want to make it into a curl. We can duplicate it. Reset. You can change the name. And also, there are some shortcuts for the most commonly used grooming tools. You can even call these from object mode. It will go into scout mode and select the tool. Using this, you can quickly go through your hair curves and edit them to create your hairstyle. So this is the Stylized Hair Pro, I hope you like it and find it very useful. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to let me know, links for the product are in the description. Alright, happy styling and have a nice day.